Hi everyone and today we're going to talk about codependency and victim shoes. So poor me shoes, poor me, poor me. I can't do it on my own. Uh, I can't do it without the help of somebody else. I am not whole, you know, because I haven't got that other person or that other thing or that whatever it is. So this is actually quite prevalent. I, am, I often see the codependency um, shoes being worn quite a bit um, with people who have had attachment trauma, um, not uncommon. So for those who aren't familiar with codependency, codependency is where you feel you can't live with them and you can't live without them. Uh, codependents are quite often um, often found quite often with narcissistic um, partners, uh, typically, not always, but typically with narcissistic. Um, so uh, the, the me, what I call the holy trinity, the me, myself and I, you know, might be, I'll just give you an example, say they're drinking, they're big drinkers or they're big gamblers or they're big drinkers and gamblers, because you know, there's normally more than one, one pair of shoes that they, they wear, they swap, and they can wear two at the same time. Um, you know, they might drink and then they'll go, right, I'm ready to go off and gamble, or they might go off and do some drugs, or they'll do all of the above. Um, and the more lost they are, the more codependent the person often comes, uh, becomes because they often feel that, you know, if only I could give a bit more, if only I could be, if only I could do, if there was only something, there must be something wrong with me. There's a lot of self berating in there. There's a lot of, I'm not good enough. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, is there something that I could do different that would make uh, them be or treat me kinder so you know the and uh, dare I say codependency is often linked with people in physically abusive relationships honestly ladies if you are in the situation please go and get the help that you actually need from actually trained codependency groups um, you know there are this this goes back into your history this is quite often a learned thing quite often I find that it's uh, something that uh, ladies have learnt when they were younger that their mum was a codependent themselves and um, they, they're your role models you know when you're growing up you don't know any better if that's how you've grown up then that's how you expect it to be right until you come to a video like this and you go shoe psychology oh my codependency shoes I, I wear I wear codependency shoes I mean what that doesn't make any sense whatsoever so you know this is how it starts is where you go oh my god that's me holy crap I didn't realize that and sometimes codependency isn't even that obvious to begin with you know it might be that when they started the relationship there was no physical abuse there was no big drinking or you know there was no um, uh, you know putting down of the partner um, and and sometimes it's not even even that you know like they uh, the person who's quite often narcissistic or or is in the relationship on the other, other end is incapable of giving them what they need. So sometimes I see that where it's not where they're intentionally trying to be unpleasant. So it can also work that way. It's just that they, they can't deal with their own proverbial. So it's like, well, if I can't deal with this, then I'm going to go off and drink and drug or drink and gamble or, you know, whatever the distraction might be. And they and they take off into this this world and get lost in the drinking drugs uh, device uh, whatever it is that's their thing you know they, it, we find different ways and the codependents going why do they not want to be with me at home why don't they want to take me out for a romantic walk why don't they want to take me out for a dinner and it's like if unless you're doing the same stuff as them and even if you are doing the same stuff as them they're so lost in their own trauma that they simply can't give to the other person so you know if if it's you know poor me i can't do it um it's the that codependent like i need to change there's a feel a feeling and again i find this to be an attachment trauma issue where at a certain period in your development and early early childhood now um your developmental years um you felt on a subconscious level 
that um, you needed to be something different to what you are in order to be loved and appreciated and that the only way to do that is to adapt you have to be you become like a chameleon you have to I mean the way that you actually have to behave and please you know they're often the people pleasers they're often the the givers and sometimes over givers you know and that's the problem is that they the, the codependents run the risk of uh, they, they give too much that they become like a doormat and I have to tell you um, uh, this was one of my issues that I landed up having um, I had a um, a relationship years ago at university and I was completely besotted with this guy I thought he was the one that I was going to marry and you know it was all of this sort of thing anyway long story short what happened was that you know he was very narcissistic it was you know what I call that holy trinity me myself and I <laughs> and it was all going on and I kept going oh you know what do I need to do in order to get the attention why am I you know not good enough that he wants to spend more time with me and and i was giving and giving and giving and i and i remember th i look back now and i go oh my god if only i had realized that i had my i had codependency shoes on then you know i had my you know i'm not good enough shoes on and i was like i'm like not and by the way not good enough shoes are you know can be a separate type of shoe altogether um but I was over giving to the point where one day I literally woke up and I went, oh my goodness, there is a fine line between giving and becoming a doormat. And that day I went, I'm never going to be a doormat again. Boom, done. And, but, you know, I had the benefit of that insight. I had, you know, I had a realization that oil and water just don't mix. Um, that on a physical level it might have worked, but on an emotional level he just was dysfunctional. And I think probably still is. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be unkind to the guy. Maybe he's dealt with whatever he's dealt with and he's got, I know he's married and he's got a kid, so hopefully, you know, they're happy. Um, but I got to tell you, I mean, it, it caused a lot of pain. And I, I was just like, I, I, you know, let's not let's not wear those codependency shoes in the first place, ladies. Let's just get those little suckers right off right now. And if I can help you with that, please, you know, do reach out to me because honestly, they do not be a doormat, you know. And if you're being a doormat, there's a reason for it. If you're overgiving, there's a reason for it. If you are going to um, extreme lengths to please him there's a reason for it so and it it's, and I can tell you right now it doesn't have anything to do with him this is where the biggest thing is is that a lot of codependents with their shoes they don't realize that it's actually from shoes that you put on years ago years and years ago you've got to kick those suckers off now there are if you want to get support groups um, if you go to AA there is AA support groups for codependents because typically um, the partners of AA members and NA members, Narcotics Anonymous, are codependents. That's their typical, so typical makeup is a narcissist with a codependent. That's typically how it works in those sort of environments. So codependents need to be okay with letting go. They're not very good with letting go. They're not very good with taking their shoes off. They like to feel like they're being needed. And you know, here's one of the things here is it falls into the Enneagram. Now, if you haven't followed the Enneagram up until now, I was talking about that earlier on in the channel. You might want to go back and review them. Very insightful, very helpful. All of this will help you heal to step out of these shoes. So please go back and listen to those if you haven't already. Please do share these kind of videos with everybody because if it just makes a difference even in one person's life, it was worth me putting this out there. That's how I look at it. And if it makes a difference to you, um, just be so thrilled if you would share that with me. Just say, you know what, thank you. This is making a difference. Just pop it in the comments box below. If you think it's helped you or could help someone else, please share it. Just, you know, it's not about, I'm not making any money from this. I'm not, you know, there's no... Uh, this is all free <laughs> so if it's going to happen if it's going to shift the shift the bar 
then let's you know let's do it and if we can get those codependence issues or fantastic but one of the biggest issues that I find for codependence is being self-sufficient and that's where I sometimes cross over into the uh, you know uh, victim shoes the poor me shoes you know it's like you know that whole uh, negative rhetoric of uh, you know, I only need to be different and, and you know, I can't survive without them. Um, you know, uh, they're my support, they're my life, they're my the, the fill in the gap, you know. It's like they are looking outside of themselves uh, to fill the hole and, and this is quite common in the Enneagram number two. Uh, I like to be like I need to be needed they're, and they become overgiving overgiving to the point where they lose themselves so it's fine to give I'm not saying don't give I'm saying give within limitation and also knowing when you're going to get back because relationships are a two-way junction relation relate relating to each other okay and it's like a ship that for me it's like a ship that goes both ways not one way you know if you're waving that ship goodbye and you keep on waving that ship goodbye to the other person then you've got to go hello you know uh where's my ship coming back because eventually you're just going to get tapped out you're just going to be so drained and so burnt out and i can tell you now that they when they get so lost in their aholism whether it's drugs or alcohol or device or whatever their distraction or soothing technique is overeating um overworking uh you know workaholics another one you know you just it's just a matter of time before you're not going to be able to give any more and they they will literally suck you dry and they're not intending to sometimes you know sometimes they they're just so lost in their their depression their drama their trauma that um they're incapable of giving so they that is their journey they need to fix that you're you know getting you to acknowledge oh i wonder if i am a codependent am i am i and if you're not sure, maybe ask some other people. Say, do you think I give too much to whoever it is that you're dating or having a relationship with? And look, it can even be in families where, you know, overgiving uh, to a parent, you know, a sick one. Um, overgiving, you know, it doesn't always have to be, men you know, it could be mental, physical. Um, you know, if there's some level of abuse where they, they just it's just too much get the professional help you really need to to get real support with this kind of stuff because this is if you're getting to the level where it's getting physical if it's getting to the level where um they are the partner is so drugged out or drinking too much to the point where it's just such a negative environment for you to live in maybe your kids are around and they're seeing that you know, you've got to do it for yourself, you've got to do it for your kids. Um, but most of all, you really got to do it for yourself more than anything. Like, just because what I, I often find that happens, I have this all the time, people saying, um, I seem to just pick the same type of person all the time. And yes, you will. Because codependents have a, are like honing pigeons to narcissists. <laughs> and they will, you know, you just, you, you've got to stop. Um, you got to break. Uh, you got to break that 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 pattern. You've got to break that um, that wheel that has been going for that generational wheel. You know, like this is quite often multi generational that has been passed on from one to the next to the next to the next. I find, and it's because it's never been questioned. Uh, um, nothing actually changes. So, this is the whole point of this. Like you know. Am I wearing codependence shoes? Am I wearing I am victim shoes? Am I wearing those shoes where it's like I feel like I can't do this without dink, 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 you know? If any of the answer of those is, yeah, I have to do, I have to have, you know, Joe Blogs in my life or whatever it is, then that's when you go, these shoes are not working for me. I am done with wearing these shoes. I want to get out. Now, if you don't know how to get out, get the professional help that you need. So like I say, go to somewhere like a, a support group uh, for codependence. Um, go and talk to a counselor. Go to a life coach. Go to a wellness coach. Whatever is going to get you to undo those laces. If they, you know, uh, 
of their boots um, or for you to get brave enough to take off one of the shoes and then go let me just test the waters and see if I can actually step over onto that side and go oh you know that 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 is actually I can do that you know and you know make use of the um, the Facebook group that we've got you know start talking to other members um, if there's a group in in your community that you can maybe uh, start or join or um, someone who's been through this themselves go and ask them there's so many you know even search up other YouTube videos like this um, just do whatever it takes to start taking those little steps that will move you in the direction that you need to now be going in you've got to break that cycle you've got to break that pattern and if you've got kids all the more reason to do it because you do not want your kids learning this behavior from you because this is going to happen for them and you know it traumatizes them I can tell you now it traumatizes them when they see this happening to their mother um, and they they know that fundamentally in their hearts of hearts they know that it's not right um, but they are role modeling you so you know you've got to get get brave and step out of these shoes if this is happening for you so um, yeah you know quite heavy shoes to be wearing um and not uncommon for a lot of women to wear um you know they are codependent men but i and it's just a personal experience i found that uh, it tends to be more women um and so let's change that let's let's get on the road to recovery let's get out of those shoes let's get onto a path in shoes that you want to wear on your path doing it your way and so that you can get to the end of your life and go oh my gosh i'm so glad i cracked that sucker i am done i am never putting those on again i'm open to wearing new shoes that are going to find me a good healthy balanced relationship that i'm going to love that's going to be good and nurturing and supportive for me my family for my kids for my kids for when i do have kids you know um that's actually going to last the distance um or if i don't want to have that then i'm absolutely fine with that that i am so independent that i don't need to have um, the people you know uh, have to have the relationship that i thought i had to have in order to be um, accepted and loved in my community so that's the whole point of of what i'm doing here is let's just get away so your shoes your path your way let's do it ladies okay look thank you so much if you have liked this please can you like share subscribe um, any comments please can you pop them in here below or go across to uh, the facebook group namaste thank you so much bye now